Escape from Freedom by Eric Fromm. Is there a hidden satisfaction in submitting and what is its essence? That's the question this book asks. Man has fought for freedom for centuries. First we conquered nature and then we freed ourselves from religious dogma and many believe that the first world war would be the last battle for freedom. But as we finally attained our goal of personal freedoms, a reversal happened. Within a few years, new systems of belief that denied men everything they had fought so hard to attain popped up everywhere. The totalitarian systems arrived. Many wanted to escape this newfound freedom, while others just didn't think their freedom was worth protecting. In Eric Fromm's book Escape from Freedom, we take a closer look at the uh, societal and psychological factors that make up the character structures of modern individuals and it tries to make sense of why so many people try to escape from their personal freedom in one of two ways either by submission to a strong leader to become a follower or by compulsive conforming to become an automaton in older forms of society you could be someone just by being born into a community, you might not have a lot of personal choice, but you had a place in life and you might have inherited your role from your family. Maybe you came from a family of shoemakers and you were expected to be a shoemaker as, shoemaker as well. Before capitalism, in, most individuals had very little um, control over their life expansion. With the rise of capitalism, everyone was suddenly in competition with everyone else and it was up to you to show your worth. In capitalism, your feeling of selfhood relies on your usefulness in production. Your worth depends on your usefulness in a competitive economy. Capitalism might have freed the individual, but it also increased the sense of isolation and doubt. We teach children to disregard dishonesty and insincerity in others. This is not easy since children have a natural capacity to see negative qualities in others. But with enough time, they learn to have feelings that are not his or her own. She learned to like people, to be uncritically friendly and smile. If you do not smile, you're accused of lacking a pleasant personality, something that you need in capitalist society in order to sell your services either as a store clerk or a salesman or whatever. Everything that the smile is supposed to express is turned into a switch that you can toggle on and off as needed. Sometimes we are aware that we just smile as a gesture, but oftentimes we fail to discriminate between the pseudo feeling and actual spontaneous friendliness. The individual is weakened throughout society because those people who actually act on their spontaneous feelings are seen as unstable. Suppression is the norm and it's only the people at the very top and the very bottom of society that don't have to be very pleasant. And maybe that's why we react so strongly to these people with anger and ir irritation because we are subconsciously jealous of their freedom to choose their own attitude. Are we doomed to be isolated and fearful? To annihilate the individual self in an attempt to overcome the unbearable feeling of powerlessness? To become an automaton? Or to become a part of a bigger and more powerful whole outside ourselves? To follow a leader, a symbol, a flag? Not necessarily. Of course you can turn to submission in an attempt to escape from freedom, but there is a better way. And the only way that is productive and doesn't end up in an unsolvable conflict, according to Eric Fromm, is by living in a spontaneous relationship with man and nature, to engage in love and productive work by self-realization. The acceptance of the whole personality in a way that allows for spontaneity. Inflation adds to the feeling of hopelessness and makes a society ripe for fascism. The inflation in Germany in 1923 and the American crash in 1929 made people doubt in their capacity to build a better lives for themselves through their own work and initiative. The hope of being able to get ahead through one's own effort was crushed and insecurity grew. And this might be alarming news for the future as we see today inflation 
inflation rate skyrockets in many countries around the world. And that's just one of my big takeaways from this book. Understanding what makes people drawn to fascism is super interesting to me. And this book really puts a finger on some of the defects of civilization and modernity and how a modern society fails to provide some of the basic needs that humans have, like belonging, community, meaningful work. I've read this book twice now and there's a lot of gems in it, but still I feel sometimes that I wish it was more straightforward than I find it to be. Uh, it might be on me, uh, but uh, I find it really hard to summarize and fully understand the whole thesis of the book. Uh, it's probably on me. I might not be smart enough, but it also might be that it could have uh, used some more editing to make the message more straightforward. It's a super interesting book and you should definitely check it out. And I will present uh, actually some further reading as well. Uh, books on, this, on a similar topic, but uh, talks about it from a different perspective. But first, please subscribe to the channel, share, like, it really helps me reach more people. First out we have The True Believer by Eric Hoffer. Thoughts on the nature of mass movements, which is a great book. This is one of, it's on my all-time favorite list, the great books list. This is like a hall of fame where I list all my favorite books that I ever run into through my years of reading. Uh, there's a link to the description below and I also link to reviews of all these books that I'm talking about. This book goes through mass movements, uh, tries to dis understand how they come about, the different phases they go through and the key players in them. It's a super interesting philosophy book. I also would like to recommend Eric Fromm's other book, The Art of Loving. He talks about love in escape from freedom as a solution to the problem of uh, freedom uh, and this book is all about love all kinds of love brotherly love the love of god uh, fatherly love motherly love uh, all of that it's a super interesting book and i have an extensive review on that up and last but not least among thugs this is one of my favorite books from last year it talks about crowds and in this case, football, hooliganism and crowd violence. It's, it's a gruesome read, super interesting. If you want to understand what makes people want to join a crowd and misbehave, this is definitely one you should check out. It's super entertaining as well and it reads like fiction. Um, that's it from me. Uh, I'll see you next week with more book reviews and book videos. And until then, have a good one. Bjorn out.